how to mint, list, and flip an NFT from start to finish. Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is one of the most highly requested videos from my Discord and Twitter community, especially for people who are just getting started in the space and have no idea how to mint and sell an NFT. If you've already minted and sold an NFT, then you probably don't need to watch this video, but it's here for you to watch if you want. Either way, I'm gonna take you through the full process of minting, listing, and selling an NFT to buying the NFT to having the funds directly in your wallet. Now, before I dive into this video, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Blockchain Gavin, like, subscribe, and turn on those post notifications. Let's go ahead and hop in. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna take into account is the average GUI for the day. And the average GUI has been generally about 30 to 50 GUI. So I'm gonna keep that in mind because that's gonna be an important factor when I'm adjusting the gas settings. So I'm gonna go into the Discord server and I'm gonna make sure that I click the links directly from the server. So I make sure I'm on the right website. I'm gonna open their contract on OpenSea in a separate tab so I could check out sales. And then I'm also gonna open up the website to actually mint the tokens right now. So the first thing I need to do do is connect my MetaMask wallet. I'm going to go ahead and press connect. And then since I'm on the whitelist, it should let me mint two of these. So I'm going to do two quantity. I'm going to click mint. And then it says 0.13 for the transaction. The gas fee is only $37. These are highly optimized contracts, but I'm going to go ahead and set it down for 40 GUI just because uh, there is no rush. We have 24 hours to mint these. So I'm going to go ahead and confirm the transaction. And that way I'm not spending an unnecessary amount on gas. So I pretty much do this for all transactions when GUI is low. That way I'm saving as much money as I can on gas fees, which is typically a couple thousand dollars a month because it definitely adds up. In this case, the contracts are highly optimized. It looks like they used ERC-721A, which is Azuki's protocol, which is open source for anyone to use. It's a highly optimized contract for very low gas fees, and it's just much more efficient. Okay, so it looks like the floor is actually two to three Ethereum. So what I'm probably going to do looking at this activity is I'm going to go back into my transaction and speed it up because GUI isn't coming down to the level I sent it at. And as more people start buying these up, and minting theirs, GUI is only going to get higher. So currently on the contract, we can see all the mints that are going through as well as atomic match, which means whoever's purchasing the token. So someone just bought one for three Ethereum, which is pretty crazy. Someone just FOMO'd into that extremely hard. I don't know why someone's paying three Ethereum. This is probably going to dip under two ETH for a while, but what it looks like is this is probably going to maintain around 1.75 to two Ethereum. So what I'm going to go ahead and do right now is speed up my transaction because I told myself that if the floor price was a 1.5 to 1.75 on these, then I was gonna go and take profits on one considering this was a 0 0.069 ETH mint. So all I need to do for that, I don't need to adjust the maximum GUI, I just need to go into speed up this transaction and I'm just gonna click save and it will automatically update the maximum GUI based on what GUI is currently. So within 15 to 45 seconds, my transaction should go through. And then we can look at the transaction on Etherscan, it says 45 seconds, so we're good. As soon as I get both of these, I'll go ahead and head over to OpenSea and list one of these because I definitely wanna take profits considering we're pretty much sitting at a 30X on a 0 0.069 mint and I was able to mint two tokens. Yeah, we can see the transactions gone through. I paid $33 for gas, $400 for the tokens. So I'm going to go into my activity and you can see I've minted both of these. So a good way if your tokens aren't showing up in your OpenSea profile, you can just go into your activity and it will always show the mints. So I'm going to open up a separate page because I want to make sure that I'm taking a look and a deep dive into the activity before I go ahead and list these at two Ethereum. Because like I said, I already predetermined that if we were sitting at a 1.5 to 7, uh, 1.75 ETH floor, then I was going to go ahead and list these. These are sitting at two Ethereum, nearly a 30X. And you'll notice that there is an $8.80 charge. So that is just a minor gas fee you have to pay anytime you're listing an item or a token from a collection for the first time. Anytime you do it after that, so the next token I sell, I won't have to pay that anymore. It's a marginal one-time fee. Okay, so one really important thing that I forgot to mention is initializing your wallet. So if you noticed when I sold the first one, it had this check mark that said initialize your wallet. And that's because the very first time that you sell an NFT, you have to initialize your wallet. Now, this is only a one-time fee. You never have to initialize it again unless you want to initialize it on another wallet. But essentially, it is a one-time gas fee that you have to pay to use OpenSea's platform. And then you'll also notice that I didn't have to pay the collection fee for the sale for this item listed because I already listed it previously. And essentially, the way to initialize your wallet is you need to go into the token you own and click sell. But most of you that are watching this probably don't have a token to sell yet. So I'm going to give you a way to initialize your wallet for a lot cheaper than it would normally be. So what I'm going to do right now is I am going to go onto a burner wallet that I've 
I've created. And since I've never listed or sold an item with this wallet, it's gonna ask me to initialize my wallet. Now, currently Guay is about 50. So Guay for the past week has been fluctuating between 20 to 150. And that's really great. These are the times that you want to initialize your wallet. And what I did at the beginning of the video where I went in and adjusted the maximum gas fee is exactly what you're gonna to wanna to do to initialize your wallet. So you end up saving a few hundred dollars because when it comes to initializing your wallet, it could be anywhere from a $25 gas fee up to a $500 gas fee. And so all I'm gonna do for this, since I don't have a token and I'm assuming most of you don't have a token, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to go up here and click create. So this is another way to initialize a wallet if you don't have a token to sell. And don't worry, you don't actually need to create something or anything. All I'm gonna do is drag a completely random picture in here. It could be one that you've downloaded off the internet or on Twitter, Google images, it doesn't matter. So I've just put in a completely random picture. Now I'm just gonna call this initialize wallet. And now we're just gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom. We're gonna click create. And then it says you created and then whatever you name it. So now all we have to do to imitate a normal collection that we would sell is we just go click the sell button. We click the amount we wanna sell it for just like we would be selling any other token on any other collection such as Tasty Bones. We click complete listing and this will now bring up the prompt to initialize your wallet. So currently you can see at nearly 56 Gwei, the gas fee is $102. So imagine listing this at 150 to 200 or 300 Gwei. The gas fee is gonna be several hundred dollars. So what you're gonna to wanna to do, if you haven't sold your first token yet, you wanna keep this in mind and do this before you sell a collection because if you wait to initialize your wallet when you're first selling a collection, you're probably gonna end up paying a few hundred dollars in gas and it's really just not worth it or necessary. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're doing this on a week when Gwei is relatively low, such as this week where Gwei has been fluctuating between 20 to 50 or 100 Gwei. And we're gonna to wanna to keep that in mind and all we're gonna to wanna to do is do what I did last time. We're gonna to wanna to go to edit, advanced options, and then I would just set the GUI. So usually what I say, if you've seen my previous video, how to save on gas fees, I'll leave that above here. We're gonna to want to set it to 40 to 60% of the average daily GUI. Now, I know that this will probably hit 20 to 30 GUI. So for this example, I will just set it to 30 GUI. And it says the maximum fee that we're gonna pay for this transaction would be $48. So it's probably gonna be less. And then all you're gonna to wanna to do is click confirm. So after you confirm the transaction, it's just gonna remain pending until Guade pops down to 30 or 40, whatever you set it at. That could be two hours from now. That could be 24 hours from now, but the transaction is just going to remain pending. And the moment that this hits 30 or 40 Guay, whatever you set it at, that's all it takes. It usually just takes 15 to 30 seconds for the transaction to go through. It's automated, it's seamless, and it does it for you in the split of a second. So that is a way about going around initializing your wallet so that you can initialize your wallet for like 30 to 50 bucks rather than wasting hundreds of dollars on gas, especially if it's your first time selling an NFT that's probably gonna heavily cut into your profits. So now we get the signature request because my other transaction went through. But before I sign it and confirm that I wanna list this, I wanna go into the items and look at how many are listed and check out the floor and see if I really should list it at two Ethereum. But it's always a good idea just to check because things can happen fast. And for all I know, buyers could have already bought up all the pieces at two Ethereum. So it would have been listing under the floor. So it looks like there's a lot at two Ethereum. I'm sure this will get swept up to 2.5 to three Ethereum pretty soon. But like I said, it's better to just take profits because we're sitting at a 30X, so there's really no reason not to. And then I will go ahead and list my other one maybe tomorrow, seeing how the market does. So you can go to view item. Now it should say that mine is listed for two Ethereum. So I'm gonna go back over to the collection. I'm gonna click buy now, and then I'm gonna scroll down and we should be able to see my token. So sometimes you won't see your token listed immediately. OpenSea can be quite slow sometimes. So you just need to refresh the page and wait. We're gonna notice that once it does show my token, it's gonna be quite low. It's gonna be at like the end of the two Ethereum listings. And that's simply just because mine is one of the most recent listings. So it's gonna get bumped to the bottom. So now I'm just gonna go into the activity one last time and check out the sales because I know we're about to crush two Ethereum. And this is why I always join the mint, even though I have 24 hours to mint mine on the whitelist, I always join the initial mint because that gives me the option to assess whether or not I should just take profits on one of my tokens. Or maybe if I only minted one token, uh, maybe I should just take profits on one token that I minted. Whereas if I waited to wake up at like noon and minted one of these, the floor price could have gone above two ETH and then crashed crashed later on. So I always make sure that I attend the mint, whether it's 2 p.m. or 4 a.m. I went to bed at 4 a.m. and now it's 6.25 a.m. So I didn't get much sleep, but I just wanted to make sure that I was able to mint these and then list them if they were at a high enough floor price to where I was comfortable taking profits on at least one of my tokens. And then I'm going to hold the other one post public sale to see if the second wave of FOMO pushes these up to three or four Ethereum. So this is my token right here listed 3159. You can see it's at the bottom of the two Ethereum listings and that's because I listed it later. All right, so it's been a couple minutes. I'm gonna go into the activity and yeah, you can see we've already crushed 2.2 Ethereum. So mine has definitely been bought up. If I open up my wallet, we should see it update. So there's over two Ethereum in it. And really quickly, I wanna show you the 
original transaction that I placed, it's just gonna say dropped and replaced once I refresh it. And that just means it got dropped and transferred over to a different transaction since I sped up the GUI. So I didn't pay that fee. I only paid the gas fee on the original one that went through for $33. So now I'm just gonna hop over to my profile. I'm gonna go to activity and that way we can quickly see the sale went through. So it says me to BC boy. So now I'm just gonna go into activity and look for the one that I actually listed. So I could show you that it says uh, you to someone else. So right here we can see my transaction. It says you two minutes ago for two Ethereum to BC boy. So that's it for now. I'm gonna go back to sleep and then I'll wake up later, see what the floor is. And one very last thing that I'd like to add when it comes to minting NFTs and why I always participate in the mint directly is because you never know if the project is gonna get exploited, if the contract is gonna get exploited. So it, it's pretty rare, it doesn't happen that often, but imagine you go to mint, you're on the whitelist, you go to mint your tokens only to find out the entire project has been sold out, but the whitelist is still going. So how does that happen? Well, sometimes contracts get exploited. So it's uncommon, it's unlikely. Most projects have their contracts, you know, nice and ready to mint and for the process to go through seamlessly. But again, you never know what's gonna happen. And at the end of the day, if you're not able to mint your tokens, life is gonna go on. The project is just gonna say, sorry, but things are just gonna keep on happening as they would. So you don't wanna be caught in that situation. You wanna make sure that you attend the mint if you can, set a pending transaction anyway, just so you at least have a transaction that is gonna go through. Just in case anything were to happen, if the contract gets exploited, you get your mints in and you don't have to worry about anything else. But that is it for this video. That's pretty much everything you need to know when it comes to minting, listing, and selling an NFT. From minting the token to listing it, selling it, and having the funds directly in your wallet to do whatever you want with, I would highly recommend you then transfer your funds if you're just gonna keep it in there to a hardware wallet, the bulk or majority of it. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at blockchain gavin. Like, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.